Hello, and welcome to another episode of Budget Buggies. Um, in this episode, actually, I'm going to try something that's a little bit different. I'm going to show you uh, another one of my matches from Ultimate Team. But what I'm also going to do is I'm going to talk you through a couple of defensive and attacking situations so that you guys kind of know how I think about the game when I'm playing it. Or if you're new to FIFA or if you need pointers on how to play uh, just like general strategies on how to play uh, a soccer game. Um, that's what I'll be tr kind of doing along with uh, a little bit less of the play-by-play -play commentary. So what you'll see is you'll see me describing a situation and then these kind of uh, stills that I made and I marked up so that you understand what I'm talking about when I discuss uh, strategy. So I hope you enjoy this. I just decided to try something new and uh, hopefully it works out and let me know what you think about it in the comments or with the like or dislike button all right thanks okay so here we have the scenario where um, the player at one has the ball and he's got a strike partner that he can pass through that's his uh, option that's indicated by two. We have two defenders covering that side of the field. There's number three and number four. Three is who I uh, the CPU automatically selects me as. What I want to do is I want to be able to switch to defender four and that way um, I can let three be controlled by the CPU and kind of automatically jockey um, so that the player with the ball at one is covered and with four, I can I can kind of double team him and close off his options. So let's go ahead a little bit more and see how that works out. Okay, now in this at this time, he's gone past us. Uh, we're controlling defender number two on the screen, and with our RB button, that's our secondary press button. We're going to keep that held so that that defender that the CPU is controlling at one is now going to track the ball carrier all the way up to the corner. What we're trying to do now is trying to push the attacker out to the sides. That way he doesn't have a side at goal and he has to do something uh, a little bit risky. That's not a safe pass. He has to do a cross. And with the defender that we're controlling, we can either choose to follow him into the corner or we can choose to cut back in towards the box and cover uh, any potential recipients of that cross. So in this case, what I decided to do was cover the recipient of the cross because I was fairly certain that Chris Smalling uh, would be able to pressure that guy and not really, not really get let him get past, uh, get past on to goal on uh, that side. So let's see what happens then. Okay, so here um, Chris Smalling is on the attacker that's going down the wing and he's going to essentially follow him all the way pressure him all the way. Um, he, he doesn't have enough pace to catch him and maybe tackle him, but he'll make sure that he can't cut inside towards the box. Um, if he does do a skill move, that could still be possible, but with a good defender and secondary press, the AI is pretty much good enough to prevent that kind of a move happening. And with Rafael, that's uh, indicated by the number two, I'm gonna try and make a run into the box and cover this attacker that's marked by three. He's already, he's already kind of marked by the two central defenders, um, but it will be a good idea um, to kind of uh, beef up that coverage and make sure that they have no chance at scoring. So let's see what happens then. Okay, at this stage, sometimes you'll get lucky and you'll get a tackle out of your uh, AI secondary press defender. If he doesn't, then you'll get a cross like what's happening in this situation. You'll see that with Rafael that I was controlling, uh, I already have the attacker that was in the box marked at one. So it's gonna be very difficult uh, for him to get a header off. And the way you wanna be doing this is you also wanna be holding left trigger if you remember to, or if you're there in place, because that will cause the defender to kind of jockey and um, push the attacker a little bit so that they don't get a clean header. Um, most of the time this will work, but if it's a significantly stronger opponent, like perhaps Adebayor or Ibrahimovic, it won't work as well. But in this case, it's good enough. And then you'll see at two 
that because the cross is going to over hit the player, we have our previous defender who was going to be occupied by the attacker in the box already being uh, freed up because we decided to mark at one. Now the other def the CPU control defender at two will be able to get the ball, get the cross that comes in and clear it. So let's see how that uh, affects gameplay. Okay, um, I wanted to show you guys another situation. In fact, this will be a little bit more bigger than the first scenario where I showed you. Here I'm going to take you guys all the way from attack to, or sorry, from defense all the way to attack. Um, so as you can see right off the kickoff, you'll see a lot of people on Ultimate Team and perhaps head-to-head. -head. I haven't played really head-to-head -head yet. But you'll see a lot of them just kind of take off with their single player and kind of go off in this diagonal indicated by the red line there uh, at position one. And they'll do a bunch of tricks. And the reason this works so well is most of the time the CPU has a hard time pressing and containing in, that, in a diagonal run right off the kickoff. So that's why this kind of thing is um, very successful, more so than running straight through three lines of uh, players. And so you only need to worry about that one left back. And if you can trick your way past him, you're into a great crossing position, or perhaps you can try and cut in. So the best way to defend against this kind of thing, this kind of a strategy, is just use your striker that you have right off kickoff selected and just track the run uh, of that player. You don't want to foul him because he'll just get a free kick. Um, all you have to do is just track him and pressure him, and nine... 99 times out of 100, you'll just get the ball back. So, so I've started to track him. Let's see how uh, how it goes from here. So here you'll see because I I didn't uh, unselect my attacker that was selected, and I didn't switch on to any of my midfield players because they're being controlled by the AI. Still, you'll see that there's a nice clean uh, line of defense and a nice clean line in midfield. So what this gives you is this gives you extra protection. Your defensive shape is still solid. And he essentially, he's boxed himself into a corner. And he also has to contend with a offensive player that you're controlling who is essentially, you know, trying to hound him for the ball. So at this point, he can't go anywhere. There's He is going to get tackled unless he is Ronaldo himself or very, very good. Then he might be able to slip you. But he's not going to slip past the three other players that are in that vicinity box him, boxing him in. So that's why it's very important that you do not panic and switch players. Just keep your initial striker selected and that way you can get both the defense and the midfield involved in this play and box him out. So let's see how this play proceeds. Okay, so we got the ball back by pressuring him with our defensive lines. Now, at this stage, this is kind of the build-up process of your attack where you just, you've gotten the ball back, you've dribbled away from danger from the man that you got the ball from. And now, at this point, I'm faced with two choices. I can either pass it to my striker uh, from, from position one all the way over to position two. And most likely, this pass, if it doesn't get intercepted by that player right next to me in position one, uh, the red uh, circle indicates... Even if I do get it to my striker at position two, he's immediately going to be pressed by two other players. And this essentially makes it very, very difficult to come out of this situation with a winning solution, a winning result, which is a goal or at least a shot on target. So unless you are counterattacking or if you're desperate for goals, what you generally want to do is pick the safer pass, which is position three, where it's kind of in the midfield. You'll generally have a player in your midfield who's good with the ball, who can control it in this kind of a situation. And more importantly, he's not going to immediately be marked by two people. He'll have a couple of other enemy players to worry about, but he'll have more time on the ball than position two would. 
So let's see how that would proceed. Okay, so we've gotten the ball out of midfield. Now it's with our striking uh, player at position one. So at this point, you can see that his defense kind of has two lines. And because of our successful pass from midfield, we've gone past his midfield line. And now we have a defensive line to worry about. One of his center backs instinctively is going to push up on the person receiving the pass at one. So at this point, you have two choices that you have to make very fast is do you pass it to three, position three, or do you pass it to position two? Now, when you look at the defensive line that he has, you can see his center back is stepping up and the left back is a little bit farther away. So what this is essentially tells you is that if you get past the center back, you'll have a great uh, space to run into. And additionally, because the center back has stepped up, there will be space and it and your player will not be offside. So what you want to do is kind of pass it to a player behind your position, that's position number two, and then immediately use LBY or a regular through ball with just Y or triangle, depending upon your platform, to make a through ball pass on to one, player number one. If you, you have to make sure that you do a give and go pass with LB, otherwise uh, the player generally won't make the run. So if you do that, if you just pass it back to two, uh, let's let's see what happens in the next next frame. As you can see, after that pass was completed, now the center back is additionally you you you've gone past center back at position two. That player is now clear and free. He's got space to run into, and you have the ball now at position one. The other center back is now pressing up on that guy. So at this point, your decision is to make a pass on from position one to position two or from position one to position three. In this case, position three would have been the safer choice because you're not passing across a player. Whenever you're passing across a player, it, it's, it's more likely going to be intercepted. But at this point, uh, what you'll see is I do actually pass it on to two because there's a wide gaping hole and I thought that would be a better better chance at a score if that player actually went through. So we'll see, let's see if the pass makes it past that attacking player that's attacking position one. So now we come to the potentially most important part uh, of the attacking tutorial, which is how do you finish this kind of situation? Now, because of your one-two passing, you've now gotten to a point where you have two attackers bearing down on a single center back. And this is the best position that you can be in apart from just a regular breakaway. Now, what I'll, I'll talk about a little bit about what ha actually does happen in this clip. And then I'll also discuss a strategy. If uh, you were the defending player, how what's the best way to go about this defending this kind of situation where you just have one defender and two attackers bearing down on you? In this case, what's going to happen now is I see uh, from position one, uh, all I have to do is avoid position two. So I can do that in two ways. I can make a regular pass with A or X, uh, depending upon your platform, to the attacking clear. Since I know that the other attacking player is already making a run, I'm going to use a through ball. So that way um, it actually bypasses two. Um, I could also have used an aerial ball. Aerial balls generally tend to be slower uh, unless they're over longer distances. And so this time I just decided to use a regular ground pass and that will just put Welbeck clear of that defender, put him one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper so that he can apply the finish. Now, if you were the defending player in this situation, you would possibly be tempted to pressure the ball carrier. Um, my advice to you is do not pressure the ball carrier. Uh, what you want to do is actually go and mark the other uh, second striker, essentially, in, in this scenario. You got to make sure that you cut out uh, the option of a tramp goal, which is what most people online uh, at FIFA uh, generally do, is they'll just try and tramp it across the goal because it's a much easier score than finishing with a striker one-on-one. -on -one. A lot of people don't know how to finish one-on-one, -on -one, and so they res resort to tramp goals. And that's fine. That's a valid... It's a valid uh, gameplay move. You just need to make sure that you cut off that easy goal for them. 
You have to make them work for it. You have to make them use finesse shots. So what you should be doing if you were the defender in position number two is actually going out wide where the green arrow is pointing you instead of going towards position one where the red arrow points. And you want to make sure you cut off that run that the other attacker on the far side is making that Danny Welbeck is making. And simultaneously, while you're doing so, since you have no other defense, you want to pull your goalie or at least make him charge towards the attacker. Now, charging the goalie is a very good tactic online because a lot of people don't know how to deal with it. A lot of people don't know how to ball roll. They don't know how to knock it around the goalkeeper. They don't know how to finish shot. And so you have more of a chance actually saving the one-on-one -on -one than you would uh, if you tried to pressure the player and end up giving out away a one-on-one -on -one or a tramp goal opportunity anyway. So that's what I would do is charge the player at, charge the goalie out at position three and that way you can cut off Hernandez's pass to Welbeck or tackle Hernandez himself. But at the same time, you're making sure the extra attacker, Welbeck, is taken out of the game. Um, and that's, that's how I would approach the situation.